Hey everybody, welcome to my video on Corno Oligopoly. Uh, warning, we're going to be using calculus in this video, and so if you don't like that, I have a different Corno video that explicitly avoids calculus. Hey everybody, welcome to my video on Corno Oligopoly. We're going to be solving for the quantities and once we get some parameterization of the prices under Corno Oligopoly for N firms, warning, we will be using calculus in this video. If you don't like that, I have a different Corno video that avoids calculus. It might be a better place to start. Here's what I'm going to do here, though. I'm first going to show how we would solve for the quantity based on some very general functions, such as a decreasing convex demand curve, as well as increasing costs and then we're going to expand we're going to get more specific narrow down the search a little bit better to a linear demand curve and individual costs and then we'll go even farther and we'll show how it changes when we invoke symmetry uh, this red one here on the end is the only one for which i actually explicitly solve for a, a number in equilibrium the others, I just show the equations under which you would solve for it. So, let's get started. Here we go. Demand curve price is a function of Q. Total cost is also a function of individual Q. Let's set up the individual's profit function. Profit for firm I uh, is equal to QI times the price of I, so that this chunk will give us total revenue, minus C of QI. Now this can be expanded a bit, D sum over all the J's not equal to I, there's N minus one of those, of QJ plus QI, minus C of QI. Okay. Hang on a sec. All right, so let's get the profit function for firm I. Uh, firm I is going to have profit looking like this. QI times D of big Q minus whoops, C of QI. Now I can expand this out a bit. QI times D of sum of all the J's not equal to I. There's n minus one firms in this summation. I am isolating QI so I can think about it more easily. You don't have to do that, but I recommend it. And there's your profit function. So if I want to choose Q, we're in Corno duopoly, so that's what we're gonna do. Choose Q to maximize my price. I'm oh, sorry, to maximize profit. I'm gonna go D pi i dqi and I'm going to get let's see product rule is going to be just d of q plus qi d prime of q minus c prime of qi equals zero and with that, I will have that each firm's best response function, best response function for firm I, is defined as QI such that D of Q plus QI D prime of Q equals C prime of QI. And then for equilibrium, we, uh, we get Nash equilibrium uh, 
at the intersection of everyone's best response function. So when everyone is using their best response function for i equals one to n, that will be your Corno equilibrium. Uh, so I can't actually solve for it because I didn't actually give any numbers for these equations. But then I would have that this sum of the qi's y equals one to n would be big Q and P would be D of Q. Okay, now let's change this up a bit and let's do it for if we have a linear demand curve and these linear costs. We can write a new profit function, PI, or profit of i's QI times A minus B sum of all the j's not equal to i qj minus b qi minus c qi c i qi there we go all right so i kind of butted into red territory there but that's okay all right but our steps will be exactly the same We'll take the derivative of this with respect to Q, and down here, we're going to get that, uh, let's see. Yeah, we're gonna get the A minus B sum J not equal to I Q J minus two B Q I minus C I Q I is equal to zero. Now, from there, we can get a best response function. Best response function for firm I is defined as QI equals, uh, let's see, And then let's see. So moving forward, we will follow the same steps as before. We'll take first order conditions with respect to QI. D pi DQI is gonna give us, let's see. I'm gonna skip a little bit of algebra here for the sake of brevity. But we're gonna get A minus the sum, J not equal to I of QJ minus Oh, sorry, I forgot to put a B on there. Minus 2B QI. And we'll get minus CI equals zero. To simplify that, all I gotta do is, I, if I solve for QI, I get my best response function. Best response function for firm I is defined as QI equals A minus CI over 2b minus uh, the sum of all j's not equal to i of qj over 2. Cool. Now, if that is true for all i equals 1 to n, then we'll have a Nash equilibrium and we'll be done. Uh, so that part is all still the same. Now, the last thing I might do, and this is what I commonly do in my classes because uh, my classes aren't intended to break your soul with the math, but I'm going to make the assumption now that CI is equal to C for everybody. So my best response function becomes QI is equal to A minus C over 2b minus 
the sum of all the QJs over two. Now, because CI is equal to C for everybody, I can simplify this even more. Nobody has any advantage or disadvantage over one another. So those sum of the QJs is actually N minus one firms producing exactly identically to QI. So this assumption here creates identical firms, which converts my best response function to this. One caution for you is you do not invoke symmetry until after the first order conditions. Invoke symmetry after this line. If you invoke it before, you're going to mess things up. You'll be treating it more like a monopoly or something else. Uh, anyway. The only thing to be aware of is you want to invoke symmetry after these lines. If you invoke symmetry before that point, you're going to mess up. You will first choose quantity using your calculus, using your optimization, and then you invoke symmetry to say, hey, look, these are similar. So no symmetry before first order conditions. I want to make that really clear. So given that we have symmetry, though, uh, let's see. This can be simplified to... Um, this goes to QI equals A minus C over B times N plus 1, which means big Q, which since they're symmetric is just NQI equals N over N plus 1 times A minus C over B. And we can substitute that into our price function. And we're going to get P equals A plus CN over N plus 1. Now I skipped some algebra there, but you can figure it out if you can do this video. So I hope this was helpful for you. I showed Cournot. First, I showed it in very general terms over here. Then I made it much less general with linear demand and linear costs. And then I simplified it by making them all symmetric so I could get an analytical solution. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you. If not, too bad. Good luck econ and guys. It's a rough road, but it's kind of awesome. So enjoy it as much as you can. Thanks for watching.